G.I. Joe, G.I. Joe. He is to good friends. Hi, I'm Raphael Murphy. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. Hi everyone, I'm Ernie Martin and welcome to the History of Television Commercials. On this channel, we're going to dive into the history of some of the most iconic television ads ever, from the 1960s through the 1990s and everything in between. We'll look at some commercials you may remember as well as some you've probably never seen before. We'll also look at the company that made them, the impact of the ad, and whether some of these companies are still around. So, sit back and enjoy our first video, the Outpost.com Super Bowl ad. It's the year 1999, and it's the height of the dot-com craze. A company by the name of Siberian Outpost, better known as Outpost.com, launched a massive advertising campaign in January 1999. The ad was very creative, and in many ways, ahead of its time. But in terms of it accomplishing what it set out to do, it was an utter failure and a complete flop. But the question remains as to why. To better understand what went wrong, we've got to go back to 1995. That year, Siberian Outpost, an online provider of discount computer hardware and software, was founded by Daryl Peck in the small Connecticut town of Kent. Now, Kent is your typical small Connecticut village with a population of about 2,500, in the late 1990s. Peck, a long-term Apple Macintosh enthusiast, founded a previous company in 1989 that provided game and utility software titles for the Macintosh platform. And at one point, Peck was serving as the Macintosh platform's president. So this is a guy who knew what he was doing from a computer and technology standpoint. Once Outpost was founded, in less than a year, it became one of the three largest retail sites on the web, doubling sales every 90 days. In fact, the company went from sales of just under $2 million in 1996 to well over $22 million in 1998. During that time, even Money Magazine rated Outpost.com as the best site for computer equipment, and their initial public offering raised $70 million. Wow. Now, it might be worth mentioning that there were a lot of companies caught up in the dot-com craze at that time, many of whom had no real sustainable business model. But Outpost appeared to be a little different and seemed well positioned to weather the coming industry storm that would eventually devastate many of the newly created online businesses. Let's fast forward to 1999. By this time, the Super Bowl had become the biggest sporting event in the country and a 30-second advertising spot during the game was becoming prime real estate for a lot of companies hoping to make their mark with viewers. It only made sense that after robust sales, a successful IPO, and high praise from some of the industry's most respected trade magazines, Outpost.com would jump on the bandwagon and ensure millions of people would remember their name. It's interesting to note that the 2000 game was known as the dot-com game because there were so many new online companies paying tons of money trying to get noticed. Well, Outpost.com was one of the few that had the foresight and launched their ad campaign during the previous year's game, when most online companies weren't yet advertising during the Super Bowl. From this perspective, Outpost had a real opportunity to stand out from the crowd simply by being early. Next, the company hired New York ad agency Cliff Freeman and Partners to develop the creative for their campaign. Cliff Freeman was responsible for very memorable commercials such as Wendy's Where's the Beef and Little Caesar's Pizza Pizza. Choosing Freeman seemed like kind of a no-brainer. If his previous work was any indication, then Outpost.com could, at the very least, become a pop culture fixture. If Freeman could do for Outpost, what he did for Wendy's and Little Caesars, it would surely translate into more customers, higher sales, and online immortality, right? 
Well, <laughs> not exactly. Hello. We want you to remember our name, Outpost.com. That's why we've decided to fire gerbils out of this cannon through the O and Outpost. Cute little guy. Fire. And again. So close. Fire. Now, as you can see, the commercial is absolutely memorable, and I think it's sheer genius. It's irreverent, downright crazy, especially compared to 1999 standards. What you want a commercial to do uh, is stand out in a way that people will talk about it over and over. That's the ideal way for a brand to carve out real estate in someone's mind. And it's absolutely genius for brands whose commercials are so creative, it's not only discussed around the water cooler at work, but it gets covered in the news. All this is good and fine, but you know there is one thing Outpost.com forgot to do. After spending a ton of money to develop, shoot, and air the commercial, they really didn't convey to the audience what the company actually did. In fact, they produced a series of commercials using you know the same theme, one where toddlers at a daycare center were shown getting tattoos of the Outpost logo on their forehead, you know, and that was, you know, right along the lines with, you know, the expected crying and the wailing and the admission from, you know, the, the head guy saying, well, it may have been a bit excessive. And then there was another uh, commercial, sort of one of my all time favorites, where it shows a pack of wolves attacking a high school marching band. Now, in my opinion, all three ads are hilarious and really stand out. But again, the commercial doesn't connect what the company does with what's being shown on screen. So, unfortunately, audiences may have remembered the outlandish commercials featuring gerbils, wolves, and toddler tattoos. At least for a little while, they struggled to remember long term what the company actually did. Later on, the company did develop new commercials that better explain throughout the spot what the company actually did. But, you know, in my opinion, the creative wasn't nearly as good by that time. And the dot-com bubble had already burst. So, eventually, sales slipped, the stock price plummeted, and Daryl Peck was eventually replaced as CEO. In 2001, the company was sold to Fry's Electronics for $21 million, and Outpost.com was no more. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more of them, Support us by hitting the like and subscribe buttons, and let us know what you think in the comment section. I'm Ernie Martin, thanks for joining us, and we'll catch you next time on The History of Television Commercials.